Council. Jonesboro's community radio station. Your life. Your music. KLEK 102.5 FM. Good Thursday morning, Jonesboro. This is meteorologist Tim Root with your KLEK 102.5 forecast. A blend of sun and clouds today, mid to upper 60s, and a southwest wind 5 to 10. Partly to mostly cloudy overnight and the low 50s, light south winds. Lots of clouds Friday and Friday night, chance of a few showers. The high Friday and the low 60s, and it'll be in the mid 50s Friday night. And still a chance of showers over the weekend, maybe a thunderstorm. Educate, entertain, and empower. We're KLEK 102.5 FM. From Feature Story News in London, I'm Holly Hudson. At least 25 people have been killed and over a dozen others injured after a passenger bus plunged into an 80-metre ravine on India's Sumatra Island. Police in New Zealand are calling off the search for the final two victims of the White Island volcano eruption. And Prince Philip has left hospital in the UK in time for Christmas. The Queen's husband was admitted four days ago over a pre-existing condition, sparking concern over his health. It's 9.01. KLEK LP Jonesboro, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council. It's now time for Community Conversations a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, or our underwriters or sponsors. Good morning, everyone, and happy Thursday to you. You're tuned in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM, and I want to say happy Kwanzaa. I hope everyone had a very great Christmas. Hope everyone was blessed with gifts of love, peace, and joy on yesterday. So today we're going to go ahead and get right into our topic. This is our third year highlighting the principles of Kwanzaa, and I'm so happy to have my guests with me on today. I'm going to make sure that everybody's microphone's turned on. Can I get a mic check, everyone? One, two. Hello. All right. <laughs> All right. So I have going from my right to left, Miss Marsha. Oh, oh, please tell me what your last. Oh, Marsha Smith <laughs> from BPN. We have Mr. Cornelius Moore from Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, Jones for Alumni Chapter, <laughs> and. Also, Miss April Prunty from Black Professionals Network right here in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Thank you all for joining us this morning. And thank you, everyone out there, for listening and watching. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get right into our conversation. The principle for today is Umoja, which is unity. And this is the first one, and I'm not going to say it's the most important one, but it is a very important one. So I want to start off with this question for you all. What does unity mean? mean to you because you all with the organizations you work with just not just bpn and kappas with your church and your job you all have to embody or exemplify unity in some shape form or fashion to get the job done so just going around the table what does unity mean to you miss marcia well um unity just means uh bringing everybody together um on one accord you know we have so many events throughout the year and we focus on that unity of the Jonesboro community everybody coming together for one purpose to serve the Jonesboro community so that's basically what unity means to me okay mr. Cornelius Uh, and likewise um, definitely witnessing people uh, coming together but I've over the years noticed and being a part of I might have to make you have you move to this mic. Yes. Okay. Okay. Just a moment we're gonna move to mic we can hear from. Uh, <laughs> all right. Let's see. All right, how about now? Yeah, that's better. That sounds better. All right, great. All right, uh, but like I was saying, um, like Miss Marshall was saying, um, definitely the coming together. Uh, is definitely a a great move towards unity. Okay. Um, but over the years, I've noticed uh, just being in in leadership positions is that sometimes coming together is the first step towards unity, but the ideology um, is not quite uh, coherent. It's or or cohesive rather. <laughs> um, and so unity to, to me is not only coming together physically, but coming together mentally. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you, okay. Miss April. 
Oh, you guys got the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I agree with both of them. It means coming together, but I also I have, have to stress putting aside your differences. Okay. Um, your favorite color might be red, mine's green, but at the end of the day, I'm like, we're here for this purpose. And you got to focus exactly. on that goal instead of like pulling apart what we stand for as irrelevant. Just be a family. There it is. Be together. All right, so let's break down different aspects of what Umoja means. And it means to strive for and maintain unity in the family, community, nation, and race. Now, the nation and race, those are, we know we got some stuff going on in our, <laughs> but we're going to leave them for last. Right. So let's talk about family first, because in order for you to be the best person you can be in your community, on your job, or whatever, you got to have something some unification if that's even a word going on <laughs> within your own home so let's talk about within your own home um how can you create maintain the unity we'll start this way okay. um, <laughs> something small you can gotcha. do you can just have like family time you turn off the technology sit around like in the living room and just talk how was your day and be sincere it can be something that small having dinner together but just getting to know one another, one another. I feel like that's as simple. Having game nights. I love playing <laughs> games that okay. may work. And we know in some black families, and I'm not just gonna pick on black families, but Kwanzaa is centered around the African American um, race, um, trying to help us connect to our African roots. So within the black community and the black families, we know that one little spark can just blow the whole family apart. So. Yeah. Yeah, going back to finding a way to talk and communicate and, you know, get to know each other and keep loving each other. <laughs> right. <laughs> <Go down. laughs> it could be like, uh, on th uh, during the Christmas cycle <laughs> on Facebook, I uh, came across a, um, a meme and it said, um, in reference to families, okay. that instead of exchanging gifts, and exchanging pleasantries and things like that. Some people, some families need to exchange apologies. Mm -hmm. They need to exchange, um, yeah, uh, those uh, differences, you know, uh, those things, those hangups, uh, those offenses uh, that have caused families to uh, become weakened. Um, and that's, so in, in my eyes, I know that each family can pinpoint uh, who was not there this um christmas holiday season mm -hmm. uh for whatever reason uh it could be from something positive or something negative but the idea is to uh address um whatever it is that's in the family and i think that if we can get to a point of communicating um the things that are keeping us apart versus I, in prime example i received a phone call from one of my friends uh in memphis that i work with and she said she hadn't spoken with her uh, brother over long periods of time and one of them, and I told myself, one of you have to make the decision um, to to lead the charge. Mm -hmm. And so they were both headstrong the whole nine. But you have to get to the point where somebody has to uh, take the lead and settle whatever um, discrepancy you may have with that person. Amen. All right. Thank you. Yeah. And with that being said, you know, we, we all want to come together as family, but um, like April was saying, even though we want to respect the differences of people that we deal with outside of our family, we have to respect the differences of our family members, you know, because some people may not believe like we believe mm -hmm. or have the same, um, you know, society plays a very part in, you know, people's values and stuff. Even though we were raised the same, they may have chosen to go a different path. Right. And so we have to respect that mm -hmm. and love them for the person that they are. Absolutely. And that will bring the unity inside of the family. Right. Amen. All right. And so unity in the community, which sounds like a cliche, but <laughs> <laughs> it, I mean, it's very important. So we know in our community, we're just right here in Jonesboro, we are made up of multiple groups of people, different educational backgrounds, different races, uh, different cultures. Um, we have uh, Asian students on campus. We have African residents. We have Mexican or Hispanic uh, residents. So we have people from all over. We have a Jewish temple here. We have the Muslim temple here. So we have a variety of people that live here in our community. However, there are things that have to get done. So how can we 
maintain unity? How can we work towards more unity in our communities? It's Marcia. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad I'm in the middle. <laughs> oh, I'm going to pick on you later. <laughs> Probably shouldn't have said anything. I mean, again, respecting those differences. We have so many cultures, and I'll speak from my personal experience because my husband is from Ghana. Okay. Uh, totally different uh, <laughs> culture than what I'm used to. So I have to respect those differences and try to understand the differences okay. that we have because you know like i said we all have different values our cultures are different we were raised different you know those traditions and all of those things um i have to respect those you know they uh, as far as christmas goes they don't necessarily exchange gifts okay it's more of family coming together eating and having a good time so i have to respect those differences okay. when um, he's he's not going out buying all those Christmas gifts because okay. that's not what he was raised to do. Okay. So just respecting that culture and uh, you know trying to learn from their culture. Exactly, okay. I like how you put that. Uh, learning from the culture. <laughs> um, two things. One, it, and it goes back to the the first topic is um, with it being family. If you don't have any culture in your family, you will not have culture in the community. Uh, you, you you can't not change the community <laughs> or shape it in, in any form fashion or another if you have not first changed it in your own home okay. uh, for some I won't speak for all it's just my observation is that um, we try to change the masses <coughs> before we change what we have the most control over and that's our own houses our own homes mm -hmm. um, and then even learning from um, the different cultures uh, that we're surrounded uh, by and I don't want to say that our culture is at the bottom of the pole um, but I will say that um, we can stand to learn from our Asian brothers our um, you know um, Middle Eastern uh, cultures because they ha seem now they may have certain ways of going about um, establishing that, that that love of you know uh, or that unity rather mm -hmm. uh, they may use different measures so I, I won't speak on on that but from the outside looking in it seems as if they have it right mm -hmm. um, but we as a as a race of people uh, our African African American brothers and sisters we have to figure out um, <coughs> what is it that's going to bring us what is that common goal I think um, <coughs> Ms. Prunty um, alluded to it earlier, uh, that common goal, what is that thing that's going to uh, keep us centered? Um, and, you know, we need to rally around that and uh, just really set settle whatever smoke is maybe um, keeping us from really actually gelling, you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like the word jelly. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I, I like that word. I've been, I've been waiting to say jelly. <laughs> um, I forgot the question. Oh, about community. Um, like, what are ways that we can try to increase, maintain, oh. create? <laughs> I, I, something simple is just attending their events. Okay. Like, if you come across a flyer and this is going on, you can just go and sit, go support okay. um introduce yourself and say um such as my name is april and i just came because i saw this flyer and i just wanted to see what this is about and just opening up that way people are more receptive to talk to you yeah. and just be friendly i'm always friendly i just want to talk to everybody so it's <laughs> easy for me but i understand that some people have problems with that but i just love to learn i want to know like why do you do it this way? Why do you wear skirts all the time? I ask those questions yeah. to like friends I know, okay. um, and they they're happy to explain it. And when they do, I'm like, oh, that makes sense. But I'm still gonna be me. Okay. But I now I won't ask anybody else that question because I don't want to offend them. Right. But you have to learn. We're all different. And that's what thing I love about the organizations you all are a part of, uh, BPN. Um, if you're not hosting an event, you're at somebody's event. With the campus, if you're not hosting something, you're at somebody's event. Um, even if you, the the alumni, can't go, you send your Catholic young men. Yes. So, uh, and I can't tell you how many events that I've been to that I've seen either the young men or you all, one or two of you all somewhere doing something. So, right. um, not just for you all, for all the organizations in town. I don't want to leave anybody out, and I'm not... Mm -hmm 
you know, I'm not trying to pick on, <laughs> but um, <laughs> right. I have worked with you all directly. And so mm-hmm. I really appreciate the work that you do in the community. We have a couple of comments and shout outs. Good morning to Mr. David Nunez. Mr. Floyd Prunty says, good job, Ms. Prunty. Aww. Great job. <laughs> um, and Mrs. Shanquetta Cunningham checks in and says, thanks for keeping us enlightened and appreciative of our diverse cultures. Thank you so much, Ms. <laughs> right. Shanquetta. Um, going back to family real quick, I want to say this. Uh, during the week of Kwanzaa, make this a family um, thing every day talk about the principles and find a way that you and your family can exemplify those principles on a small scale large scale but just start the conversation um get the conversation rolling and get the kids involved all right so now these two we're gonna kind of tie them together and they're really tough for the nation and for our race Mm. Um, we know right now we are in a state of a lot of things going on. <laughs> I love how you put this state of a lot of things going on. <laughs> and this is not to get into a big political discussion. However, we can't escape what's happening in our nation, not just right. in America, but all across the world. So what, I mean, I know we don't live in a bubble. This is the real world, but what are some things that we can try to start doing to start healing and unifying our oh, that's, nation. Oh, that's easy. <laughs> well, I won't say easy. I won't say mm-hmm. But I will say the most um, prominent thing I'll say is, okay. is make sure that we're registered to vote <laughs> <laughs> and actually utilize that right to actually vote. Um, I think that we have, even on each level, um, local, even in the state, and nationally, I think I don't know. I don't think I know we have the numbers um, to create a change or ripple mm-hmm. uh, coming from um, our demographic, and so we have to do um, more. We have to do more. Um, that's getting like starting early. I know. I, I'll even even the indictment against you know myself waited too late last. Um, uh, registration period okay. for voting um, but now starting earlier um, and, and connecting with other organizations that may be already doing uh, voter registration and okay. I think that's what the key sometimes is not necessarily starting a whole new program is actually just partnering with those that have already mm-hmm. uh, begun the, the process and making it bigger and more impactful so um, you know, we we have the numbers. We have the we have the ability. We just need to um, put the um, hold, hold our feet to the fire. That's right, <laughs> most definitely. <laughs> you want to chime in? Okay. Well, I agree with the voting, but like in my family, we make it an event. Like my dad and I, my uncle, we all go together to vote. Yeah. Early elections, <laughs> we it's just a big deal. My daughter even comes; she get the sticker. Yeah, right. I'm just like I can't believe people just don't vote. It's something that's a right given to us and it, like why would you not exercise that right mm-hmm. you have plenty of opportunity they're out there with the signs you see the plays like it takes five minutes okay so uh, voting that's a big deal and i would like for you to talk about and both of you to talk about from the education field um that's you know we see things happen across the nation changes in the curriculum different types of schools popping Mm -hmm. up you know there's this whole conversation charter versus public school versus Mm -hmm. private school versus you know montessori versus whatever other type of educational system um we have the pwis versus the hbcus and Mm -hmm. all these different entities it's like they're in battle (laughs) in some type of battle uh, with each other um so talk about from an education standpoint across the nation what can we try to do to help create some unity and you know, like cohesiveness or something. <laughs> um, really, the responsibility, even from a curriculum standpoint, the, the responsibility is not 100% on those that create the actual text or the the um, the guidelines for that matter. Um, it's up to the teacher as well. Um, even during, even where I am now, um, I had I teach uh, fourth grade okay. uh, English, and the thing with these particular kids is, um, I'm trying to think of what, what month it was. I think it was more like October. Okay. And literally my school is maybe walking distance from a slave haven uh, in Memphis, right? But a lot of these kids had never heard of it. They never had 
been to it the whole nine and so the the education does not necessarily start at the school it starts at home the love of who you are as a as a race or the love of who you are um you know as a person it it, it, it starts at home and is developed and then you go and you learn more um in higher education per se and so the, the quest for your knowledge of who you are and where you come from things of that nature uh so it, but in my classroom i have up um images and 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 different um uh you know symbols okay. that's what i'm looking for of uh their heritage and so um if you if we are to do that if we are to create more beyond the video games and because right now those are the things that are, are mostly in their face uh and so we have to exchange that right they have to put a, a certain type of book a certain lesson i have to create or manipulate it to say hey you know we may be talking about this period of time in, in american history um but i'm going to interject uh what actually was happening to your people around this particular time in american history that is left out of the textbook so as you have to be creative and you have to be uh intentional uh in teaching um our our, our uh, black and brown babies about um, okay. where they come from all right we're going to get ready for a break here in a moment when we come back we'll discuss some other questions like um what would unity really look like and feel like for you and then what can we do on an individual level and what are some activities or events you all have coming up within your own organizations and if someone else out there has an event or something coming up soon please let us know give us a call in the studio 870-277-1080 or drop us a message in our facebook live feed or email us at klek at klek fm.org we'll be happy to get your announcement on the air or on our social media pages but please don't go anywhere we'll be right back with more of our Kwanzaa discussion on unity You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. Is your son equipped for manhood? I'm Mark Merrill with today's Family Minute. When my boys were young, I couldn't imagine what they'd be like as men. Before I knew it, they were growing up. Learning to catch in the backyard turned into Friday night touchdowns. The spelling bee turned into the SAT, and chasing girls on the playground turned into looking at girls in their prom gown. Before our boys become men, there are a few things we need to teach them. First, teach him to be a gentleman. Proper manners is a good place to start. Second, teach him to be respectful. He should learn to honor others, especially those in authority. But the rest of the ways to equip your son for manhood Listen to the Family First podcast at markmerrill.com. Remember, your family first. Want to connect with Mark on Facebook? You can at facebook.com slash markmerrill. Made possible by the Kappa Nu Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization committed to service to all mankind. Kappa Nu Omega Alpha Kappa Alpha on Facebook. Family Minute is brought to you by the Guide Right Jonesboro Kappa League, a nonprofit organization that guides young men to a life of achievement. Kappa League Jonesboro on Facebook, Jonesboro underscore Kappa League on Instagram, and Jonesboro Kappa League at gmail.com. Hi, I'm Matt Kenseth. You don't have to be a race car driver to know that life can be full of drama. Some of it you can't control, like mechanical issues, high winds, and rain delays. But there's some drama you can skip. Skip the drama that comes with not having your high school diploma or equivalency. Find free adult education classes near you and finish your diploma. Visit finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. You just need to take that first step and find free classes near you and leave the drama for the racetrack. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ed Council. Meineke of Jonesboro is now Starks Auto Service, a full-service auto repair and vehicle maintenance center offering engine and transmission repair, brake service, tires, oil changes, and more. Performed by ASE Certified Mechanics. Starks Auto Service, 2813 South Caraway Road in Jonesboro, 870-204-7112. 
Starks Auto Service, jonesboro.com. The McDaniel Law Firm, 400 South Main Street in Jonesboro, is a firm believer in justice and equality for the minority community. The McDaniel Law Firm has fought for our rights for over 44 years. The McDaniel Law Firm offers legal help for wrongful death, as well as trucking and automobile accidents. Bobby and Brett McDaniel are available for a free consultation at 870-336-4747 or at www.mcdaniellawyers.com. House of Details, located at 3915 East Highland in Jonesboro, is a proud supporter of KLEK, offering detailing on any type of vehicle, basic wash, hand wash, shampoo, interior cleaning, waxing, buffering, headlight restoration, pickup, delivery, and more with the motto of anything mean we can clean. Details at 870-273-5187, House of Details on Facebook, and at klekfm.org. Hello, I'm Officer Victoria Evans. I have always had a desire to help others in need and to be an example and role model to young women by encouraging them to never give up on their dreams. My dream was to become a police officer and to serve my community. In 2016, that dream became a reality and it is the most rewarding experience of my life. Now I want to let you know about the same opportunity. The Jonesboro Police Department will conduct testing every month for patrol officers. Applications are available online at jonesboropolice.com or at the Police Department, 1001 South Caraway Work. The Jonesboro Police Department offers a competitive salary, health and retirement benefits, top of the line training, and most importantly, the chance to make a difference in the Jonesboro community. Join me in making Jonesboro a better place. The Jonesboro Police Department is an equal opportunity employer, and women and minorities are especially encouraged to apply. More information is available at 870-935-5657. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Happy Kwanzaa to everyone out there. Again, I hope you had a great Christmas and now we're into our Kwanzaa season. And I do want to state this, I didn't state this in the beginning. Kwanzaa is not a religion-based holiday slash celebration. It is for everyone to celebrate. And so we're going to continue on with our conversation on unity. And we've been talking, uh, or my guests, Ms. Marsha Smith, Mr. Cornelius Moore, and Ms. April Pronti have been talking about, you know, what unity means to them in reference to family, community, and within our nation, the things that we can do. Um, I want to give Ms. Marsha a chance to answer this one from the medical perspective. We hear a lot of stories, too many stories about how sadly black women are not listened to. Um, when they go to the hospital and they have babies or different other things and not just black women but <sighs> blacks in general mm-hmm. and again I'm not trying to pick on or not say anyone else doesn't experience this but I know what I've read <laughs> and the stories that I've seen <laughs> and heard so it's like what can be done across the nation from a, in the medical field to make sure everyone receives quality and consistent health care <laughs> It's, it's kind of funny that you brought up this question because me and another co-worker were actually talking about this um, particular thing, um, us not being heard when we go to the doctor, you know. Um, and a lot of it um, is that um, we probably don't express ourselves enough. We have to be very persistent when we go to the doctor okay. if you're not getting the answers that you need from your medical professional you need to be asking those questions and staying on them until you get the answer that you desire a lot of times um, we go to the doctor or you know the older generation they go to the doctor and the doctor said this but they don't really understand what the doctor said to them so you have to have them break it down to you um, in words that you can uh, that you can understand, and if you're not getting the answers that you need, and that medical professional is not doing it for you, you can seek other uh, medical professionals. That's why they have so many. You, if you're not getting it over here go get it somewhere else mm-hmm. um, and be very, um, and educate yourself. I mean, yeah. a lot of times they say, well, you have uh, hypertension. What does that mean? Um, or you have, you're pre-diabetic. What does that mean? You know, you have to ask those questions and educate yourself. And that's the, really the only way you're 
gonna get better is if you educate yourself because if you know how to take care of yourself um, and know the right things to do, you'll be uh, better apt to take care of yourself. Okay, mm. awesome. So again, yeah, then we know there's a lot of health disparities and especially in the rural areas of our community, different communities. And so I would love to see an increase in those that are educated in the medical field, those that have the knowledge and the skills to take a little time out from themselves and reach out to those and share what they know. It's not all, everything we do can't always be about, am I getting paid? How much am I getting paid for this? Mm -hmm. Or am I getting recognized? What award am I going to win? Exactly. Sometimes we gotta step outside of ourselves and outside of the accolades and all of that and just say, okay, it's about the person. Um, I was listening to one of our moment, our motivational moments and it was um, basically said, find yourself through service to others. And I quoted, not exactly how they quoted, but when you start doing for others, then you find yourself and you can, you enrich your life as well. So and that's another way that we can create some unity. Step outside of yourself and do something for somebody else that right. probably can't do anything back for you. Exactly. Right. Right. All right, so we want to go on to some other questions. I want to say good morning to Miss Cynthia Teague and Miss Keandra Borders, and um, thank you all for checking in. And I want to give a shout out to Cynthia, who also, Marsha was also part of LEAP, uh, mm-hmm. which is Leading and Emerging African American Professionals. Oh, oh, right, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that's just one other group. And then Miss Keandra has a group, um, Adjusted Crown mentoring group for young ladies and there's other groups around town i would love to see us all just someday super, super really support each other on such a level that like it just radiates you ever seen like in cartoons and like when something explodes or radiates it's like this wave of light this mm-hmm. energy that just <laughs> expand i would love to see and feel that in our community not to say we don't do that but i know that there's more that we can all do mm-hmm. um BPN, you do the back to school drive. When I tell you the first year, it was absolutely heartwarming and amazing <laughs> to see all the people come together yes. um, for that. And then there was a fall festival someone did. I know St. John partnered with some other people and um, there's some other church, not St. First, ba- First Baptist, mm-hmm. um, partnered with some other individuals. And you all do the Kappa, um, the Gears Foundation yes. does the, you do a black tie event. Yes. Uh, what else do y'all do? Oh wow! Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pr- primarily it's the um, it's the black tie event, um, and we have received um, you know major support from the very beginning. Uh, this is, this will be our fourth year oh, going wow. into that, and I, I will say since they are here, BPN has very <laughs> uh, always supported that, and so we try to definitely support a BPN because they, they have the uh, the um, what is it the Black History Quiz Bowl. Yeah, the Black History Quiz Bowl. Yeah. Thank you. And hey, that's coming up, and we're gearing up for that, too. And notice how I threw that gear in there. So, yeah, so. My team's going to win. I know, right? So, yeah. So, yeah, that, those are those are things like the Equabila that we look forward to. Uh, and just really instilling that that love of knowledge of self uh, and community and, and our demographic it really has to do better um, by involving their kids. You know, I know when I was growing up, we didn't really have a lot of options, you know, and now I think that this generation, you know, they have too many options. Uh, they get to decide, and I hate to say it, they get to decide whether they want to be a part of something uh, beyond the football, beyond the basketball, beyond the, uh, no, the sports rather, um, but something that's meaningful and um, substantive, substantive, and as far as you know, what's going to what's going to teach them these principles? Um, and I know a lot of times, and I hate to say not not to throw out anything, you know, but uh, against anyone, but a lot of their coaches are not, you know, African American men. But they, even though they do receive some type of principle as far as you know, life skill and things like that. Um, if we would come together and put it in their faces, mm-hmm. uh, then we can control the narrative and go a little bit deeper than what they may be comfortable with. So, uh, just wanted to throw that out there as a. Well, that ties a, in the race aspect of to strive for and maintain unity in the family, community, nation, and race. Oh, okay. Representation matters, and again, just because we are, and I say this all the time, I'm gonna say it again. Just because I'm pro me doesn't mean I'm anti you. Exactly. <laughs> so right. 
right. representation matters. And April, me and April talked about this earlier, how, you know, you're a black educator. You're a black educator. You're a black medical professional. Representation matters. It does. People need to see someone who looks like them to help them feel a little more comfortable. And, like, I'm sure your I'm students, um, April, with you, with your young girls, and especially with what's happening in society with the reality TV and all this mm. music and stuff, they see a black professional woman. It's okay, I can strive to be that. <laughs> yeah. And they see this man that's, you know, not sagging and not all these hundreds of gold chains and all this, and they can strive to want to be that. So, yes, representation matters. I'm going to get off my soapbox. Good morning, Adrian. <laughs> Well, that matters. Don't though. get me started. <laughs> it matters. You don't have to follow trends. You can be yourself. Right. Yes. Yes. Uh, and so, more of us that have these skills and abilities, and in our profession, need to step up and say, "Okay, I'm going to give up myself and make myself present, so that the future generations can see what's possible." And nothing's wrong with music and sports, but there's more to the world. There's more professions. Mm -hmm. There are more professions out there. Good morning to Adrian Everett, who's a part of MOL Alphas. Um, Alphas, they are always busy. And all the other AKAs and Deltas and Sigma Gamma Rose and Zetas. Oh, <laughs> right. To all say D9. D9. <laughs> Don't forget somebody. <laughs> And then the OBS and Masons, you know, and then the very, I can't name all the churches we have in Jonesboro. Everyone is always doing something and we need to just come together and support yeah. each other. It's not about whose name is on top of the list. It's about us working together. Absolutely. <laughs> so I want to ask this question. I know it's kind of probably a loaded question. <laughs> Why should go first? Right. <laughs> what would true unity look and feel like to you? Wow. I know, right? <laughs> I'm gonna go first. Okay, I'll take this one. Because I'm all about love. This is this is who I am. I'm a loving person. So you guys remember the show The Care Bears? Yeah. Um, that's what it looks like to me. You know, they're holding hands and walking down the like, you know, everybody's happy and positive. That's it. I know it's like childish, but I, I mean that. I really mean it. I just feel like put your put aside your differences and just be like, I'm happy you're here. We're not going to be here forever, so why are we fighting? Why are we constantly always bickering? Why can't we just get along and have fun sometimes? That's right. That's my outlook on life. Yeah, and, and even to piggyback <laughs> off that, I know you said it may, it may be childish, but I think that's sometimes what we've lost. Right. You yes. know, let's go back to, because, uh, you know, you see it on Facebook as well. You know, I spend a lot of time on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I got I have so many different uh, outlets that keep me on there, but. It's a one where this uh, little white boy, this, this little baby, this little black boy baby, and they're just playing and having fun and walking, holding hands, things of that nature. And then we see when they grow up, it it this division or this, you know, uh, whatever takes place. Um, so we need to go back to you know the the simple things, you know, that right. that keep us you know together. I mean, mm -hmm. ideology will always keep us divided, even in the race, um, because we you can see one topic a hundred different ways mm -hmm. but we need to have that one central uh idea that we all hang our hats on and say you know i'm gonna like you like you said and put past you know um the way i would do it you know so if i would do it one way marshall would do it one way and you know everyone would do it their own way if given the opportunity but we have to take down our own um drive and ambition rather mm -hmm. um and say, you know, we're going to do it BPN's way. We're going to do it the Alpha's way. We're going to do it the Kappa's way. We're going to do it whoever's way. That's actually doing it. Um, you know, and so we don't have to, this competition thing. Right. It's what is it's, it's going to really be um, the thing that has to die off. Not necessarily die off. That's a bad word. I don't want it to die off, but it has to be, it has to be placed <laughs> appropriately. Healthy, healthy competition. Yeah, yeah, healthy competition healthy is great, but I think sometimes it's, it's, uh, the competition is misplaced, and so it, it, we work against ourselves. Uh, that some people call it the crap mentality. Yes. Um, and so, you know, whether it be in the medical profession, whether it be in uh, real estate, whether it be in education, whether it be uh, in any other um, sector, we have to find a way to tie all those together and have one common agenda. And, and work towards that. Yes, sir. Ms. Marshall? 
Well, I mean, they 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 pretty much said it all. <laughs> I mean, going back to the base, basics, you know, what unity means to me, like like I said before, is everybody coming together, um, sharing their differences, and feeding off of those. I mean, we we all can learn from each other. Um, I've learned so much as being a part of BPN. I've learned so much in so many different aspects, and we're trying to bring that unity together mm -hmm. everybody coming together for one common goal and like she said holding hands and uh, sharing mm -hmm. our stories and you know sharing our successes and our failures we can all learn from that so we yeah. can all learn from that I think that's one thing we don't talk enough about we try to put it okay we try to put on these airs like I got it all together no my. you know oh, like, yeah. <laughs> yes. and that's why I don't like social media we you like, don't see the success uh, yeah I don't see the struggle we're all fixed up on the outside but on the inside we're just a puddle of mess Me yeah. and if we're not careful it, we're gonna break down and yeah. it's gonna spill over spill out through our attitude and our behaviors okay. we'll start becoming more withdrawn and more moody and whatever versus let me talk to someone let them know what's going on with me maybe they can help me exactly. <laughs> you know get through yeah. this um, once you start feeling better you can start working together better and most of the time that's actually what happens is we hold in so much stuff and then it starts spilling out um, in different aspects and people don't understand so they're kind of standoff oh I don't want to deal with her because of this and that so you have to let people know where you're coming from mm -hmm. I want to uh, read this quote it's an African proverb about unity if you want to go quickly go alone if you want to go far go together so again we can do things alone it's just gonna take a much longer time <laughs> Or we can do it together and get it done quicker and probably better yeah. together. Uh -huh. Right? Okay. So I want to ask this other question. <laughs> I saw that quote, that, that proverb. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was just waiting to throw it out. You beat me to it. <laughs> you <laughs> are mine. <laughs> <now. laughs> make, make sure to post it on all your social media. I, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> all right. So we talked about, you know, you all work with kids to some degree, you in the medical field, but what are ways we as a community can begin the process of increasing or creating more unity for future generations? What can we do? What seeds can we plant? Anybody? <laughs> Education. <laughs> Education. <laughs> Make I want to say make education fun because I feel like everybody should like love to learn. But for those students who don't have stable homes, um, just give them a book and give them time to like come on let's read this book together and instill that something small. And then whenever they're feeling down or feel like nobody loves them, they can always go to this book and then their imagination can take them further. Because that's how it was for me. It's okay. like okay, you can escape this way instead of doing something negative or um, you end up in jail or whatever, you got this book, you you can write, you can um, write a letter to yourself, one day I'm gonna look back on this and it's not that bad, to like make yourself feel better because um, in today's age it's all about technology and they see this mm -hmm. and that's what they're gonna follow or this is how it's supposed to be and that's really harmful so they need adults like us that they can come talk to and this is the real world this is how it is these people are putting on the front and they don't understand that and so i talk to my kids like i talk to anybody else I'm like yeah. you can do this and it may lead you here but why would you want to be anybody else my dad always tells me who you're trying to impress when i do anything exactly and so i ask my students that and it, it makes a difference like why am i doing this it makes them think about their actions a little more okay I don't know if I got off on a tangent. Who <laughs> 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 are you trying to impress? I understand, I understand. So, you're, you're planting seeds within them to help them think maybe in a different way than they would normally think. All right. I go with that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, definitely um, education. Um, I remember making the switch from being in the business sector, you know, and going into, like, I've done retail management. And, um, that's why I went to school, you know, initially. And then I made the change, in, you know, to uh, education. And, you know, it's more, it's more challenging okay but it's more rewarding uh -huh. um because you you have the essence of you know the the children you know you have their you have their 
little minds and it's like clay doh you know you're you're fashioning it and they're forming it and so you're more intentional in what you're you know um you know doing uh, while you're in, in the presence of them and so you have to uh be mindful that where these kids are because the, the reading levels of most most of our children is alarming um and so the indictment the indictment is how, how often are you putting a physical book not not an, not the ipad not the i whatever not the the um whatever um the technology piece that's all well and good it has its place but the physical book uh, where they can flip through it you know my five-year-old and she's you know flipping through books and she's you know doing her thing right and uh she's excited when she reads even one line you know uh so the 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 idea is that you have to put the right information in front of our kids okay. because they are our next generation and they are our next thinkers. They are our next um, everything. They are our next, right? And so we have to make sure that we set them up for success in the areas especially where we knew that we did not necessarily um, meet the bar or the criteria, you know. Uh, so I think uh, ultimately if we want to see a change, we actually have to be the change that we want to see. So uh, start working towards that. But because we're not experts on any one particular, so we need each other. I think Hezekiah Walker's you know song, "I Need You to Survive," <laughs> <Yeah>. right? <laughs> you know, I won't hurt you with the words from my mouth. You know, things of that nature. We won't tear down our our people um, for where they have come up short, because uh, we all come up short. Um, but where where can we build them up? And, and, you know, we take our rightful places in the communities that we are uh, a part of and not just waiting for things to be handed down to us and say, hey, you have to take this. And you had no prior engagement with that idea, uh, but you have to take on all of the, um, the consequences of it. And so we have to be more engaged. And not only in our homes, but in our communities. What's going on? Mayoral races getting ready to come up. Uh, we just had the MLK, um, uh, the the street naming, and the, all of the controversy and all these things that came along with it. We got to be more engaged, people. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to take another quick break. We'll come back. This Marsha. We'll get a chance to answer. Yes. And we'll share some final <laughs> thoughts. You wow. tune in to Community Conversations, Kayla K. <laughs> 102.5 We'll be right back after these announcements. You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. We're back with Money Matters. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. If you're working hard to get rid of your student loan debt, or worse, just ignoring them, hoping that they'll go away, you may be overlooking an important source of relief, Uncle Sam. That's right, getting a job with the U.S. government could be a way to get rid of as much as $60,000 in student loan debt. The government will make payments to your student loan holder of up to $10,000 a year if you work for a federal agency under the Federal Student Loan Repayment Program. This perk maxes out at $60,000. The catch? You have to agree to work for the government for at least three years. The four agencies making the most extensive use of student loan repayments were the Departments of Defense, Justice, State, and the Security and Exchange Commission. The program is run by the United States Office of Personnel Management. You can get more information from their website at opm.gov. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. for Money Matters, a product of American Urban Radio Networks. Money Matters is made possible by the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization focused on joy in our sisterhood, power in our voice, and service in our hearts. www.jonesboroalumni.dst.org. Money Matters is brought to you by the Guide Right Jonesboro Kappa League, a nonprofit organization that guides young men to a life of achievement. Kappa League Jonesboro on Facebook, Jonesboro underscore Kappa League on Instagram and Jonesboro Kappa League at gmail.com. 
Money Matters is brought to you by Bancorp South, offering checking, savings, loans, credit cards, and wealth management. www.bancorpsouth.com or 870-972-9800. KLEK 102.5 FM would like to invite you to our annual Kwanzaa celebration to be held on December 28, 2019 from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the ASU Pavilion. The theme for this year is Dashiki Day Party. Dashikis and African attire are not required to attend. Included in the celebration will be addresses and prayers from elders in the community a presentation about the history of the dashiki, and a game for all to enjoy. Foxy's fabulous accessories will be the paparazzi vendor on site. A photographer and photo booth will also be present. We're asking for donations of children's socks, t-shirts, and underwear to be donated to a local organization that serves families and children. Thank you in advance. We look forward to fellowshipping with you. This event is free to the public. KLEK thanks C.J. Pepper and the staff of Life Strategies Counseling Incorporated for helping people through hard times in life such as depression, family issues, stress, abuse, and more. They offer counseling and therapy for all ages, individuals, families, and groups. They are located at 1217 Stone Street, phone number 1-866-972-1268 or online at lscihelp.com. KLEK 102.5 FM salutes small businesses. Small businesses promote local character and success, keeping money in the local economy, local jobs, entrepreneurship, community well-being, and so much more. Contact us today to learn more on how your small business could be featured on KLEK for as little as $25 per month. Dear John, uncontrolled high blood pressure is serious, and I can quit whenever I want. But when I quit, you quit. Sincerely, your heart. To get your high blood pressure to a healthy range, visit heart.org slash blood pressure. A message from the American Heart Association and the Ad Council. Winging it is not an emergency plan. Make sure your kids know what to do during an emergency. Who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. A public service announcement brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM with my special guests, Ms. Marcia Smith, Mr. Cornelius Moore, and Ms. April Prunty. And I have been really enjoying this conversation. I thank every single person out there who has tuned in, who's made comments, who's listening, wherever you are. Thank you so very much for tuning in. So Ms. Marcia is going to answer this question. What are ways we as a community can begin the process of increasing and or creating unity for future generations. Okay. Um, like they were uh, saying before, catch them while they're young. Okay. Um, we have to set the example for them. You know, um, I have a lot of nieces and nephews and I try to, um, when I can, like you said, give them the physical books instead of the toys and the iPads and the guns and all of this stuff. Give them something that they can learn from. Um, we have to set that stage for them as adults, um, you know, because they, they pretty much, the kids learn from us. Um, they mirror what we do. Yes. So if they see us trying to educate ourselves and trying to learn they're going to be more apt to do that for themselves okay so um, we have to set the stage for our future generations because they're going to be our business leaders they're going to be our educators they're going to be our nurses they're going to be our politicians they, we have to set the stage for them for the standard um, for our race mm -hmm. all right and so last question Express some of the moments that you witness unity at its best right here in Jonesboro, Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody well, can I go. do. Um, was it the Juneteenth celebration at oh. Parker Park? That's how um, I found out about you guys. I walked okay. in, I was like, wow, <laughs> so many brown people, and I just felt at home. And everywhere I went, they were so nice and welcoming, and like just forward with their information and answer any question I had. And I was like, 
This is great. It's, this is great. That's all I can get past that. I had a time right. of my life. So thank you. That was great. Yeah. Well, stay tuned for Juneteenth next year. We're gonna add a uh, worship service element to it. So nice. stay tuned. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> I can't sing, but I'll be out there. All right. <laughs> No, I, I was sharing the same. Uh, anytime that there's a, an, um, an expo, uh, such as like the Juneteenth, um, there's been others as far as like the back to school drives, um, it, anything of, on, on that scale uh, I've seen um, in this community. They come together and really, um, you know, service the community as a whole. You know, because a lot of our a lot of our organizations have that one common commonality of service mm -hmm. uh, in the public's interest, and so um, anytime we can come together like that, you know, it's it's showing that that unity, not necessarily just coming together. Because you know, we, we as a people, you know, we can we can all flock and yeah. end up in the same <laughs> location. It can be a soup, it can be at a Walmart for that matter. You know, you'll see a hundred <laughs> people you know, but uh, but actually being you know meaningful coming together for a, a, a particular cause that we all can share in, uh, such as you know giving back to our children and, and our communities. You just gave me an idea, and I'm just put this out there for y'all that are feeling. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we got some work to do. How about an old school field day? You remember in elementary school? The sack races. Sack races. Oh, three wow. day Red races. Rover, Red Rover. Oh, for the adults, though. I know, That'd right? That would be super cool. Yeah, so. that would. Okay, 2020, 2021, all y'all. 2021. Like <laughs> I know. It'll take a whole year to prepare our bodies for that. Yes, yes. All right. Old school alumni field day. All That's right. <laughs> Okay, I like Marcia. that idea. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Ms. Marsha. Well, you know, I really, I mean, I, if I were to have to pick one event, it would be the Community Back to School Bash. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, that warms my heart to see people just come together from all different walks um, for the betterment of our community, giving back to our, our kids, uh, letting them get a head start on the school year, you know, without having to worry about, well, they don't have a backpack on the first day of school, you know, those type of things. So if if I had to pick one event, it would be that event. Okay. <laughs> and just to yeah. highlight some others, like for Thanksgiving, a lot of your organizations, um, I know oh, that yes. the Kappa League and the Kappas, you all go out and serve. Um, at for, yes. At Seminars Auditorium. Then for Christmas, BPN hosts the a toy, toy drive, drive and a lot of organizations come together for that um so the black uh history quiz bowl which is coming up in february yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, already returning then, champions <laughs> oh, i'm gonna let it i'm gonna let you have that and so there's so many activities so again start looking on the events pages on facebook the internet look who's having what and join them for their celebration is it because your name is on the top of the list or are you a major sponsor whatever still be a part of that organization's event let's increase the unity in our community i'm gonna say it all that support <laughs> all right. black business so i thank you all for joining us in our last minute if you can go around and just share some final words um support black business Yay, yeah. Support yes. black business. <laughs> you know, entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs in your in your area that you know, you know, support them. Like them on Facebook, Instagram, all that. Support them. All right. Black History Quiz Bowl is coming up February the twenty second at um, ASU Auditorium. It's gonna be at twelve p.m. So that is February twenty second. Be looking for information, and we are looking for sponsors, donors, uh, volunteers, etc. All right. Is there for any final words on unity today? U N I T Y. That's it. Look, we don't have, we cannot pay the royalties on this. Oh, sorry. Right. <laughs> I didn't know. You should, you should add a add, add a letter to it. Exclamation mark. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, wow. I can't thank you all enough so much, and I can't wait to see all the ways that unity is displayed in this community on today and beyond. And I want to see everyone out there just making a little effort yeah. to unify yourself within your family, your community this nation and our race as a whole so thank you all for joining us and don't forget tomorrow we have another principle to discuss join us at 9 a.m have a great and blessed day and loving this unseasonal weather <laughs> <I know. All> right. <laughs>
Thank you for listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community